We've been playing a lot of table tennis at the studio and keeping score is becoming a point of contention to say the least. This is outrage! We couldn't afford to hire one of these guys and other solutions seemed a little too analog for our tastes. So in true maker fashion, we wanted to see how overcomplicated a scoring system we could make. And here's what we came up with. First, we have our brain under the table. In our case, it's gonna be a Raspberry Pi Pico W. The brain will have buttons connected to it and manage the game state. It will also host a wireless network that will allow communication with our scoreboards. These will each have their own Picos connected to the table's network and display the game score, match score, as well as indicate the current player's serve. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, couldn't you do this all with a single Pico? And you're not wrong, but we wanted the flexibility to mount these really far apart and maybe even battery power them at some point in the future. We really like the looks of these seven segment displays, but size options are pretty limited and the prices were a little more than we wanted to spend. Besides, we already have lots of perfectly good LED strips and they do RGB. So with our rough plan, it was time to get to work. I won't put you to sleep with the code session here, but we started by writing some code to draw numbers and letters on our seven segment displays. This code will run on each of our scoreboards. The server underneath the table takes care of the game state and sends messages to the scoreboard telling them what to display. For CAD design, we started with a simple box for each digit. We carved out some slot for the wires and added some channels for the LED strips to lay in. On the back, we cut out some more holes for wire management and a place to mount our Pico, as well as these little notches we'll use to hold the parts together. Then we did a smaller version with two more little spots for the serve indicators. And finally, some diffusers to cover up the LED strips. We'll be printing these in clear PETG. Everything is on the GitHub linked in the description below. If you want us to go a little deeper next time into how all this works, let us know in the comments. Now we've got our displays all figured out, it was time to set our 3D printers to work printing the various digits and button boxes. It took a few iterations and some trial and error, but soon enough we had parts we were confident would work. For buttons, we went with these large arcade buttons off Amazon. They have a very satisfying click and are big enough that they should be easy enough to slap when we get them installed under the table. We designed these boxes in this tool to house our buttons, then assembled everything and connected the wire. Such a great click. And now onto the scoreboards. First, we cut all the strips to the various lengths we needed for the scoreboard. Then we cut the wire for the five volt signal and ground on each of the strips. We solder all the wires and strips on both sides, then test the input and output on each one to make sure all the connections are good. We slide all the strips into the right places and then strip and tie all the wires behind the board, tucking everything away as neat as we can. If you are building these, make sure you pay attention to the direction. We wire everything like this with the serve indicators at the end after the match digit. Now we attach everything together and connect our final sets of wires for all three digits. These little bow ties are used to, along with some super glue, hold everything together. We solder our wires to the Pico and then sink in some M2 heat sets before fastening the Pico to the back of the scoreboard. And now we've got a scoreboard. Well, we built them both, so we've actually got two scoreboards. We hung them on the wall and wired the USBs back to a central USB hub that will let us easily power cycle them when it's not in use. It also has the added benefit of letting us easily debug things. Finally, we run this wire under the table and mount our last Pico here. This is our main game controller and needs the player buttons connected to it. We'll attach the buttons to the underside of the table with some VHB and then connect them back to our brain. With everything powered up and connected, we're ready to play. The system's working great, and if you are interested in how anything works, check it out on GitHub or ask us questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and keep on making stuff.